If the 2004 hit TV show Lost taught us anything, it's that you should probably plan the ending of your story in advance so the whole thing doesn't fall apart. But if it taught us anything else, it's that planes don't always have a safe landing. These are the most dangerous plane landings in the world. Number 15. Aircraft Carrier Landing Amazingly, aircrafts used to be guided to a safe landing by a landing signal officer who used barely anything more than hand signals and their own judgment. Imagine the stress of that job. In the 1950s, this was replaced by the landing signal officer using a radio to inform the pilot of his status using various concise commands such as little right or little low. The landing signal officer would also tell the pilot if they should abort the attempt to land. Most times, these commands are heard perfectly and the landing is safe. Sometimes, they're not. A fatal crash with several famous images happened on board USS Midway on August 21st, 1984. Through the footage, which was caught by the pilot's landing aid television camera, which helped the landing signal officer keep an eye on the plane's position, the multiple commands to wave it off went seemingly unheard. The aircraft, as a result, burst into a dramatic ball of flames after an even more dramatic ramp strike. The pilot, Lieutenant Thomas R. Doyle, who was only 24, died in the crash. It just shows you any fault, human or mechanical, can result in absolutely devastating results. Like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the odd topic. This photo showcases the moment a pilot did a seriously bad job at the whole land in a plane thing. Losing control of the plane, the pilot, who for legal reasons can't be named, tried his best to steer as serious turbulence kicked in. He did his best, managing to aim the plane back toward the runway. Things were looking like they were finally gonna go well, but then, right at the final moment, the plane hit the runway and then skid off over the edge, crashing into the water. Water. Yikes. Comment down below with the hashtag odd topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 14. Bhutan Paro Airport. If you see Paro Airport in Bhutan on your boarding pass, then don't bother getting on the plane, unless you're feeling dangerous. You may need a few in-flight beverages for your nerves to survive the landing, as the airport strip is tucked cozily in the steep mountains of the Himalayas. Considered the most dangerous airport in the entire world, the fact that you have to dip in and out of the way of multiple houses flung all around its mountainous region is enough to put the fear into any usually confident flyer. The Paro Airport know they're a dangerous place too, as until July 2011, only one airline, Druk Air, was even allowed to attempt to make a landing there. With the landing strip only being 1.5 miles above sea level and the runway only being a mere 6,500 feet in length. It also holds the title for being one of the only airport landing strips in the world which is shorter than it is above sea level. I mean, if only eight pilots on the planet are qualified to land at an airport, then you should probably assume something is up. Number 13. Lukla Airport, Nepal. If you're traveling to Mount Everest, you wouldn't think that the airport to get there would be nearly as dangerous as the deadly mountain. Well, if you choose to use Lukla Airport, the main path to the Everest area, then this is the case. Congratulations, you've chosen one of the world's most dangerous airports to get to one of the most dangerous mountains on the planet. Lukla Airport has a very short runway, which is situated in the mountainous Nepal region, which doesn't help pilots when they're trying to take off or land. With an elevation of nearly 9,500 feet, the runway's only a gut-wrenching 1,729 feet long.
For comparison, the shortest runway at New York JFK is 8,400 feet. And New York isn't located in the tumultuous Nepal mountains, last time I checked. What awaits you at the end of the runway? Oh, just a cliff with a 2,000 foot drop. The other end is decorated with a solid stone wall, so to say the environment here is hostile to aircrafts would be an understatement. If the plane doesn't land perfectly, then it'll either smack into the wall or drop off the side of the cliff. Better make sure you trust your pilot then, and carry a good luck charm. Accidents do happen, sadly, with three people killed in 2019 when a plane veered off the runway and ran right into a stationary helicopter. Number 12. Coucheville Altipour, France No one likes a dodgy landing. When you're just sitting in your comfy airplane seat you've spent good money purchasing, and then all of a sudden you're told over the speakers by the pilot to brace for a hard landing. Or sometimes they don't give you any warning, and before you know it, you're being thrown about in your seat as people get themselves into the brace position as the distant cry of a baby can be heard. If you don't like dodgy landings, then you won't like Coucheville Altipour in France. Similar to the runway in Nepal, this French runway is only 1,788 feet in length. With a gradient of 18.6% to protect those on board and local skiers from a devastating collision, the icy environment doesn't exactly help matters. I'm starting to think people are just putting runways wherever they please without even thinking about how a plane is even meant to land. Due to the Coucheville Altipour being in the Alps, aside from just landing in this precarious place, the pilot has to navigate through snow, ice, fog, and storms. Imagine being a skier and looking up and seeing a plane so low above. I'd be terrified a bolt or anything would drop on my head. There have been numerous occasions of the hazardous terrain just being too much for the grip of the plane's wheels, with a small plane skidding across the runway and colliding with a wall of snow in February 2019. No one was fatally injured, thankfully, which is obviously brilliant news. Number 11. Gibraltar Airport There are plenty of dangerous airports around the world, but one which cuts through a city and which has a busy street casually placed on the runway? I've heard it all now. The Gibraltar Airport, which is otherwise known as North Front Airport, might just be one of the scariest airports in Europe. Located a stone's throw away from Gibraltar city center, which is about 500 meters away, the airport is far from conventional. Aside from literally being in the middle of a busy modern city, the runway has a very bizarre feature. Intersecting the runway is a busy street, Winston Churchill Avenue, a bizarre place to decide to set up shop. The street is so in the way of the airport's operations that when a plane's getting ready to land or take off, the road has to be closed or else there might be quite a few running and screaming customers. The original use for the Gibraltar airport was as an emergency airfield for the British Navy. Nowadays, it hauls cargo and brings tourists to the beautiful peninsula on the edge of Spain. Number 10. Madeira Airport what is it with European airports having such short runways? Another to add to your list of airports to avoid at all costs is Madeira Airport. Found near the city of Funchal on the Portuguese island of Madeira, which is most notable for its Madeira cake and being the birthplace of one of the greatest soccer players of all time in the form of Cristiano Ronaldo. The airport has even been renamed Cristiano Ronaldo Airport in 2016. The runway is only 1,600 meters in length and has a history to prove why this is a huge problem. Most notably, the TAP Portugal flight accident in 1977 occurred on this runway, which is notorious for being the deadliest airline accident in Portuguese history. Following the tragedy, which was caused mainly by the short length of the runway, there was an immediate push for an extension to be put into place. The only problem being that the runway literally hangs off the side of a cliff, meaning there's no room for an extension. The solution? Build a bridge to cater for the extension of the course. 
Despite the extension's success and the collection of many accolades for the construction by a Brazilian company known as Andrade Gutierrez, the airport is still known around the world as one of the most dangerous out there. Number 9. Mate Kane Airstrip if there's anywhere to place an airstrip, a mountain plateau probably isn't the best place to choose. Way up high in the mountains of the southern African country of Lesotho is the Mate Cane airstrip, with its bumpiness being the least of your concern. If you decide to take off from this airstrip, then I recommend the faint-hearted stay well clear. At the end of the tiny airstrip, which is only 1,312 feet long, comes a drop-off like no other. You better make sure your airplane's in good condition because at the end of this airstrip is a 2,000-foot drop off the side of the mountain. Insanely, there have even been cases where the aircraft was unable to make it into the air before getting to the edge of the mountain, sometimes due to wind conditions. It was even closed for international flights in 2009, with clearly someone in power realizing how mad it was to have it open to begin with. Although, that being said, small private aircrafts continue to use the dangerous airstrip today. Number 8. Tongoenyes Airport Making sure the runway to your airport isn't covered in slippery water that can cause fatal crashes goes without saying. Or at least you would think. The Congoenyes Airport is only one of four airports catering to the busy modern metropolitan area of Sao Paulo, a municipality in the southeast region of beautiful Brazil. But aside from its huge size and warm climate, Sao Paulo's nearby Congoenyes Airport has become infamous for its dangerous runways. Complaints of slippery surfaces caused by significant collections of dangerous water on the runway fell on deaf ears. That was until a tragedy in 2007 occurred and finally grabbed people's attention. In July 2007, a TAM Airlines Airbus A320 overran runway 35L and smacked right into a local warehouse due to heavy rainfall. Tragically, all 187 people on board were killed, including an extra 12 people on the ground. This was Brazil's deadliest aviation accident of all time. A change had to be made, and it began with the construction of grooves in the runway to allow proper drainage of collected water. Congoenyes also lost its international status, and there were restrictions on the size of aircraft that could use the airport's runway, as well as limitations on the airport's business schedule. All of these commands were put in place in a bid to prevent such a tragedy from ever happening again. Number 7. Skiathos, Greece Watching the planes go past high up in the sky above you is a weirdly satisfying feeling. But if you were ever to go plane watching on the Greek island of Skiathos, then your spotted planes won't be way up in the sky amongst the clouds, but rather a lot closer to your head than you would ever imagine. Skiathos Airport is a wild place and possibly the craziest airport on the planet. Nevertheless, many tourists flock here every year. But why? Dubbed the European St. Martin after the Caribbean country's similar airplane traits, this Greek airport has plane landings that are so low that people are pushed onto the floor by the force from the engines of these mechanical birds. Holiday makers obviously flock to the area in a bid to grab a snap of these low-flying planes to add to their holiday album or upload to their social media profiles. The airplanes land and depart right behind a small road, with this novel airport being one of the area's hottest tourist spots, even if it must be nervy for the pilot to land at. Number 6. Hong Kong's Kai Tak Airport Pictures of Kai Tak Airport in Hong Kong look like the work of someone who's really good at using Photoshop. The awesome site is characterized by countless skyscrapers surrounding the airport, so close to the runway that whoever designed the airport and thought to put the plane's path so close to numerous people and buildings must be very audacious, to say the least. 
To add to the cinematic nature of the airport are the mountains to the north which provide a stunning backdrop and the presence of Mother Nature. With many photographs of the low-flying aircrafts flying above the heads of those in the busy metropolitan street, it's weird to think it's normal for them to be able to look up and be so close to the airplane that you could almost wave to the pilot. The only runway of Kai Tak Airport is hard to miss, as it runs straight out into Victoria Harbor, leaving no questions to be asked by lost tourists looking for their flight home. Number 5. McMurdo Air Station, Antarctica At the Earth's southernmost continent of Antarctica, the icy landscape is filled with various animals such as penguins, seals, whales, and runways made from ice. Antarctica is beyond freezing, with the coldest temperature recorded there being negative 89.6 degrees Celsius. If you were to fancy a trip to one of the coldest parts of the world, then you might end up using McMurdo Air Station. The air station has three runways, which are unique in the fact that they are made entirely from ice. I suppose it'd be hard to create any tarmac runway on the freezing floor without the warm tarmac melting straight through. Might as well use what you have at hand then. In this case, an incredible amount of ice. As you can probably imagine, an ice runway isn't the safest of places to land a plane on. Amazingly, pilots even have to use night vision equipment when trying to land as it's practically dark all day, thanks to the location of Antarctica on a globe. Poor visibility, freezing temperatures, and a runway made from ice. Flying to McMurdo sounds like it'd be more than a little bit of a stressful affair. Number 4. Crosswinds Landing Watching an airplane battle against crosswinds as they attempt to land can strike fear into the heart of any confident flyer. With plenty of the viral content scattered around online, the sight of a plane being pulled around at the mercy of the strong winds will make you question whether you really want to go on holiday after all. You would think that this pulling and pushing by the blasting winds would make things difficult for the pilot, but quite the contrary. Even though it might look absolutely terrifying, the reality is that a crash almost never occurs due to the plane experiencing crosswinds because the maneuvers required to land in such conditions conditions actually make for an easier and more cushioned touchdown than usual. Although, for a pilot, it can be relatively stressful as they approach a runway almost side-on. If you were a passenger towards the back of the plane, you would barely be awoken from your nap. The pilot would approach the runway side-on because one of the tactics used to smooth out the situation is to have the plane point towards the direction of the incoming wind, which is usually perpendicular to the aircraft. I don't know about you, but if I saw a plane going side-on towards a runway, I would be terrified and on the phone to emergency services before you could say the word crosswinds. Number 3. Wancho E. Urasquin Airport, Saba Island if you're a pilot, you only have a short list of needs and requirements. On that list would probably be to have a runway with a decent length, something the Wancho E. Urasquin Airport certainly doesn't have. Found on the Dutch Caribbean island of Saba, the airport has the shortest commercial airport runway in the world. What happens if you overrun it? Well, you dive into the ocean due to the runway being surrounded by cliffs and chopping seas, which I'd imagine wouldn't make the softest of landings. This looks like it would be a nightmare for any newbie pilot to tackle, with it also causing real problems for any veterans too, I'd imagine. The runway is only 400 meters in length which must be terrifying for the pilot who has to try and land the aircraft on this ridiculously small strip with very little room for error. The passengers on board must cling to their armrest and pray to as many higher beings they can think of as the plane makes the descent. Number 2. Miracle Landing of Aloha Airlines Flight 243 Captain Robert Schornsteimer and his passengers were in for a shock when the Boeing 737 used for Aloha Airlines Flight 243 exploded open mid-air on a flight between Hilo and Honolulu in Hawaii. 
The explosion ripped apart the plane, with people on the ground watching on, claiming to have been able to see the passengers on board through the gaping hole. The culprit was thought to be either metal fatigue or high cabin pressure, with the FBI ruling out the use of a bomb. One stewardess out through the gaping hole, Clarabelle Lansing. Of Captain Schornsteimer had a big task on his hands to take the decompressing plane down safely to the ground. The explosion struck when the aircraft was some 24,000 feet in the air, and the captain was forced to somehow limp the aircraft 25 miles with only one engine in a dramatic act of steely nerves and immense skill. Even though the plane was practically falling apart, the captain somehow managed to land the craft at the Kahului Airport in Maui and, in turn, established the event as one of the most famous tales of modern aviation. There were numerous injuries and one fatality, with a flight attendant called Clarabelle Lansing being sucked out of the spontaneous hole. Passengers even had to cling on to the other flight attendant before she suffered the same fate. If it wasn't for Schornsteimer's expertise, it could have ended even worse, that's for sure. Number 1. Landing on the Hudson River it must have been a dangerous landing if they made a film starring Tom Hanks about it. If you've heard of dangerous airplane landings, then you've probably heard of the landing on the Hudson River. The 2016 film Sully was based on the mind-bogglingly brilliant skill and intuition of Captain Chesley, who was in charge of U.S. Airways Flight 1549 on that fateful day. The commercial passenger was meant to fly from New York to Charlotte, North Carolina on January 15, 2009. Everything seemed regular until six minutes after takeoff from LaGuardia Airport, the airplane collided with a swarm of Canada geese during its initial climb into the sky. After the crew decided they couldn't go any further due to the loss of thrust from both engines, they turned their attention on the Hudson River after concluding that they would not be able to reach the safety of any airfield. The Airbus 320 collided into the Hudson River shortly after. A plane landing safely on water is an almost unheard of feat, but the crew on board somehow managed to do the impossible. All 155 on board safely evacuated the plane, which was in great condition aside from being a bit wet. Rightly for their bravery, the entire crew received the Master's Medal of the Guild of Air Pilots and Air Navigators. Wow. I am certainly going to try to avoid these airports in the future. Have you ever had a rocky landing? What's the worst landing you've ever experienced? Let us know in the comments section below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!